I picked up these two hand planes at a local auction. This plane, however, is a little bit more of a mystery. There don't appear to be any markings on it. The uh, wood pieces appear to be made of rosewood. We'll find out later. The lateral adjuster, again, it's a single uh, stamped piece. There is no iron on it, just a chip breaker. From what I can tell so far, uh, no markings. The depth adjustment knob is larger. Looks like it's made of brass. The Y yoke looks like it's a single piece. And it also has the frog adjustment mechanism in it. They're both clones of the Stanley number no. 4. Here's a Type 11. You can see for all intents and purposes they're identical in size and shape. In comparing the knobs, this is a Stanley Bailey uh, Type 11. In terms of the totes, this is the mystery plane and this is the Stanley Type 11. The mystery plane has a little bit more of a square edge. First thing I'm going to do is just put a little bit of oil to help loosen it up. I'll give that a couple days. I'm in no rush to get these apart. I've had this guy, at least some of the parts, soaking uh, in oil for a few days. I'm going to try to take it apart. And this looks as though it had a gray paint on it. And that does not look like it was smoothed or finished. It looks like a grind marks there, grind marks here, and gray paint here. There is no iron. Chip breaker with screw looks a lot of surface rust. I see a number 8 right here. 804. 804. There's the knob. Feels heavy. And I don't see a lot of finish left on it. A bit of a shine. These screws weren't too bad. Hmm. This depth adjustment knob is left hand threads. Maybe I can get this out of the way. I'm not having a lot of luck so far. Looks like it's binding on the yoke. I may have scratched that getting it out. I can't get the frog adjustment screw loose and the lateral adjuster is binding. This screw comes out though. Now the screw comes loose. Okay, there is the frog assembly. It's cast. This depth adjustment lever is shoehorned up here in one piece and bent. The depth adjustment yoke is cast. Pretty snug, pretty tight. The bottom of the frog is dead flat. The surface looks like it was machined. And in here is a number three. And it looks like this area was machined, and that's still seized in there pretty good. But it appears as though the frog fits pretty snug. There's not a lot of play in there. These edges were machined. I can get the tote off. Oh, yeah. And there's a neck on the brass. Other than that, it looks pretty fine. And my only challenge now is to get these last two pieces loose. I don't know what this piece is called, but it fits into the slot in the screw head. So this tongue piece is seized into the screw itself. was a cap to something I forget what but it happens to fit perfectly with a friction fit over the tab for the frog adjustment mechanism and right now it's filled with WD-40 and it's been soaking overnight.
Well, it took me about a week of this soaking in penetrating oil, but I was finally able to turn it and loosen it. Woohoo! You can read the 804 a little bit more clearly on the cap iron now. This allowed me to identify the plane as a Vaughn and Bushnell number 804. They have a website and a fair amount of information. So, let's try to put some of this in context. I don't know who the owner of this uh, drive is, but uh, I found this on a hand plane uh, website, or, and it's a great resource. And if we go down here to this document, and let's click on it, and here's the Stanley Adjustable Iron Bench Planes, where they talk about some of the things. We're going to look at the Bailey Iron Planes and the Bedrock Planes. The Stanley Bailey Plane is four dollars and forty cents for the number four and if we go down a little bit further the, here's the 604 and the price of that is four dollars and 85 cents the bedrock plane is 45 cents more expensive than the bailey and the bailey is 440 so it's about 10 percent more expensive for the bedrock let me go over to this website, and this is the Vaughn and Bushnell website, vaughnandbushnellplanes.com, and we'll click on the 804, which is our comparison here. And here's a mediocre drawing of it, but the thing I want to focus on is the price in 1923, according to this, was $5.30. So this Vaughn and Bushnell 804 was selling for about 10% more than the Bedrock Planes. And to try to figure out what that all means, let's go over to this website. And this is University of Missouri Libraries, Prices and Wages by Decade, 1920 to 1929. These uh, tend to be federal government reports, so they were a little eclectic. Here's a link for Common Labor Starting Wages by Industry. 1926, which is the period of interest. And let's click on this, and they go down and try to tell you what they looked at. They only looked at a few industries, and to be honest, I don't know how these industries would map to similar occupations today. But what I want to focus on is this column here in 1926. It said all industries were averaging about 43 cents an hour, and that's for starting wages. And they break it down a little bit by industry. You'll notice general contracting is the highest. In fact, they give the average without general contracting because it's so much higher than the others, it's actually pulling the number artificially higher. If you were in one of these other industries, you're certainly going to be making less. For whatever reason, if we use 43 cents an hour, then that puts into context if you were going to buy a Bailey or a Bedrock or this Vaughn and Bushnell, you'd be looking at uh, 10 hours of your labor or more. Today, if you're making, say, $50,000 a year, that's more or less $25 an hour. Uh, 10 times that would be $250, kind of in the category of buying a premium hand plane today. But again, these are starting wages, so I don't think it gives a great picture. If we go back and we look at comparative wage rates in the United States and foreign countries in 1927, click on that. It comes up. They kind of give you an idea. Converting the foreign rates to U.S., they did the best they could, but no guarantee on their accuracy. What I want to look at is uh, fitters and tool makers. If you go to the United States, these guys are averaging 87 cents an hour, which is uh, significantly higher than the starting wages table that we just looked at. So the average guy who's been in the workforce for some number of years could certainly be expecting to make this kind of labor. And lathe hands, I'm not sure what that is, but that's 76 cents an hour. And machinists were making 81 cents an hour. Milling machine operators, 74 cents an hour. Uh, if we look at bakers, they were making 93 cents an hour. So again, I think somebody with a, with a real skill or a real trade with some number of years of experience was certainly making about twice as much as uh, those that were starting out. So to put that in context of the price of a hand plane, instead of 10 hours or so, maybe you're looking at five hours. If you were making $50,000 today, then you're looking at 125, maybe a little more than that uh, for one of these hand planes. The Vaughn and Bushnell website claims the hand series compares favorably with the Bedrock planes, citing that both have cast iron bodies. Of course, you know, a lot of planes were made of cast iron, and I'm not familiar with the Bedrocks and those of the 1920s. Given that they're more expensive than the Bedrocks and their price differential is comparable to that of the Bedrock to the Bailey, then the Vaughn and Bushnell should be similarly better than the Bedrock, if that makes sense. I can't give that informed opinion, but I'm suspicious. Let me know what you think. 
Well, that's all I have for this video. I like to keep them short, around 10 minutes or less, and I like to add information that you're not likely to already find in the world of videos. I have more in the works on this plane, particularly how I chose to clean it up and restore it, which I'll post shortly. Hey, thanks for coming by, thanks for watching. I'd love to have you like, subscribe, and leave a comment.